Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Midweek Breakdown. Now, this week, I'm actually recording this a little bit earlier in the week, and uh, it's actually morning right now as I'm doing this. And and the reason for both of those is, is usually I start off early in the morning and earlier in the week kind of reflecting on some of the feedback and things that, that came in from last Sunday's teaching. Now, normally in the midweek breakdown, I, I, do a, I share with you a side study that goes into strengthening, strengthening the coming Sunday's teaching. And, and the reason I do that is because I'm, I'm not going to share that on Sunday morning, but it was a side study to strengthen a point. And, and sometimes those are really great devotionals. So uh, today, this week, I feel like the important thing so far is actually a reflection from last Sunday, uh, because one of the things is I follow the master plan through through the teaching of the passage that we're in. We've been going through the book of Acts. So I early on, I, I mapped out what the sermons are. I, I mapped out the I did some basic study of, of each of the weeks. So I have kind of those kinds of outlines. And then as it gets closer during the week, I will do those side studies and things to really build that message out. And so uh, that's kind of the process. But then each week as I go through it in a, in a live fashion, I reflect on what happened last week uh, to see how God is speaking and moving as, as a part of the build towards next week. You see, one of the things I believe about God's word is it's actually God breathed. The Bible is God breathed. And so there needs to be this exhale and inhale of information that's going from week to week. So I do the master plan of the study, but then as we live in it, I want to really hear God's leading as we do it. And that's exciting to me because to see where we are right now in this storm and to see the things that are going on in the world and to know we started Acts over a year ago, but I can still resonate in God's word in a living way as we teach it. So this week, uh, what I'd like to share with you for just a few minutes are my kids' reactions uh, to the sermon from last week. You see, I gave five different words during the sermon that, that I think Paul was experiencing on the beach at Malta as he, he ministered there and, and that God wanted for him and that we see in Scripture. I, I, I asked my kids to take paper to write down those five words, and I told them we'd talk about it afterwards, and we did. And that conversation was exciting to me. And it stayed with me and I've journaled a little bit about it for this coming week. And so I thought I'd share their reactions and share some of the behind the scenes from from last week as I really thought about it and considered it. And I thought it might be a great midweek encouragement for you. So are you ready? Are you interested? OK, let's go. Okay, you can see the five words on the screen. Now, whether you saw that video or not, you're going to be able to understand this. this is going to be helpful. And uh, like I said, this is a great midweek devotional. It's really encouraged me. So after the message, I went in and I asked my kids if they had written down the five points. I checked their papers because that's what you do with kids that are seven and ten. Uh, you check their papers. So I checked their papers and sure enough, they had written down all five words correctly. Uh, it sounds like time for ice cream, right? <laughs> but what I did was I asked them which word on that list really uh, meant a lot to them, that really stuck with them. And son spoke up. In, in the way that Paul does. And, and he said the word that, that I should have known he would say. He said, Dad, service. Uh, that, when you talked about Paul pulling out that, that brushwood to make a fire and, and, and he got bit by a snake when he was trying to help people and trying to do something. You see, I realized in that moment, my son is very task-oriented. And he said, Dad, I, w when you were talking about taking out the, the trash at, at, at the camp and when you were talking about when you clean up at the church, sometimes I take son with me to clean up. Uh, that was the one he really responded to. And, and one of the things about my son I know is that he loves to do tasks. He's a task-oriented person. And, and he loves to be given things to do, whether it's take the, the, his puppy some water or, um, you know, give the dog a treat or uh, clean up something in his room. He, he loves helping out. If, if we give him something to do before dinner, he's happy. Uh, he's been doing this thing lately the past week or so where he will take a stuffed animal before he goes to bed and he'll put it on mom's pillow. And so there's a stuffed animal on my wife's pillow. And, and I ask her, what is that? And Well, Paul's been giving that to me so I, I feel better. So I have uh, something to, to, to be there with me. And with everything going on in the world, I think my son is, is sensitive to, to that. And he wanted to do something, some act of service. 
And and there are people in the world that are task oriented. There are people that are more relational. My son, if I want to get closer to him in our relationship, I have to do a task with him. And I'm more relational, but he's more task oriented. And it, it doesn't mean he doesn't do relationships. It means some people need a task uh, to pull them together. My son is very service minded and task oriented. And that really stood out to him. Maybe that stands out to you. Uh, Paul building that fire or an act of service. Uh, one of the things I've learned throughout my life about people who are more task oriented is they really feel love when you're doing an act of service for them. And that is very important. Well, the, the next one who shared was my daughter, Josie. And Josie shared the one that I could have seen coming a mile away. Uh, she shared encouragement. And she loved the fact that uh, in verses uh, 15 and 16 of Acts 28, that, that Paul gets encouraged, not when there are healings or miracles or uh, the viper doesn't kill him. He doesn't get encouraged by anything else. In the passage, Paul gets greatly encouraged when he sees other believers, when other believers come down from Rome and walk with him to Rome. And, and he's so encouraged to see other Christians, other people that have given their life for Christ, the church gathered around him. And, and Josie loved hearing about encouragement. And that's who she is. She, she will start singing to me. If, if, if daddy seems down, she will want to dance or put on music. She always, when, when she comes in a room, she, she takes the joy to a level up every time. She's just a natural encourager. And, and she loved that thought of Paul going on this walk and suddenly having other believers around him that he could walk with in nature all the way to Rome. And, and that's who my daughter is. She doesn't want to just go on a walk. She wants to go on a walk with daddy, you know, and, and I love that about her. She's a natural encourager. And so she was drawn to the encouragement word. And then so my kids answer that we're talking and my wife volunteered. She wanted to be involved, too. And, and I didn't ask her to take a piece of paper, but she did. And she wrote them down. And, and hers was the one that I love her for so much. Uh, hers was the first one, kindness. She loved the fact that Paul got to the island and found kind people there. You know, my wife has a sweet, wonderful heart. She's a peace person. And sometimes I, I can rile things up. I'm not necessarily a peace person. I am relational, but I'm also, for whatever reason, sometimes a get in your face person. I don't mean to be. I have, I guess, rough edges. But my wife is a kind person. And I love that about her kind and gentle heart. She's always been so good to me. She's so good to the kids. And she wants everyone to get along. And she loves the fact that when Paul gets there, everyone is genuinely being kind. And, and, that just really stood out to me. Uh, one of my challenges sometimes in life is, is, is I don't want to make my wife uncomfortable. How can I be kinder? And there have been moments where I, I blow that because of, of who I am and how I'm tooled. Uh, but for all of us, I think kindness can be a wonderful thing. And as I said last week, we're not called to share the gospel with people that don't want to hear the gospel. We're to share the gospel with people who are receptive to the gospel. And if they're not receptive, we let our peace return to us and we move on. Paul gets there and finds people who are receptive to what he's going to share. And that meant a lot to my wife. And that means a lot to me. So uh, th that was their three. Kindness, service, and encouragement. I've got a pretty great family, don't I? Well, then I asked them, what, what do you think dads are? What, what do you think dads are? And it was a little bit of a split decision. And the split decision, surprisingly enough, was in the final two. Uh, there was some talk from the kids that I like to witness. I like to get up and tell people about Jesus. I mean, after all, isn't that what a pastor does? He, he, he bears witness. But I, I kind of gently said, well, kids, you know, the witness part of this was God working through Paul, doing miracles that Paul couldn't have done the, the witness of the, the viper not killing him was God's power, not Paul's. Paul's didn't have the power within himself to resist the poison of that asp. The, that power came from the Lord's hand on Paul guarding him. And then my wife said, no, yeah, it's, it's purpose. Your life is about purpose. And in the passage, the purpose came when Paul started praying with people and, and sharing Christ with them. And not only did they become healed in the body, 
b- cured in the body from what was going on, but but they became cured in the spirit where they became believers because they responded to Christ. And and that is the purpose, seeing the kingdom come in, seeing people join the kingdom and come into the kingdom and come under God's grace and his forgiveness and his power and his mercy. That's what I live for. I, I live for the witness part as well. I love seeing God. If God can use me to do anything, he is surely the most powerful God. There could be no one else like him if he can use me. And I'm, I'm not putting myself down. I, I'm telling you that I'm just a man. Just like Paul said, I'm not a God. I'm just a man just like you. And you can have every bit of power that I have in my life because all my power is, is his, is the Lord working through me. He provides the witness, but I have to be on purpose. I have to be sitting by those bedsides, holding hands, praying with people, sharing the gospel with people as often as I can to see them come into the kingdom of heaven. If you're hurting today, let me know. I want to pray for you. I want to encourage you. I want to show you kindness. I want to serve you. I want to bear witness to the Lord's power, what he's done through our lives, what he can do for you if you would trust him. But the the greatest thing is that purpose to me. And, And that's when Paul started doing that. And he was in the house of Publius, who was the most popular man on the island. And he healed his father and he was, they started bringing everybody to him. He, he had a platform to see the kingdom and it wasn't for Paul's benefit. It wasn't for to extol Paul and make Paul great. It was for the purpose of making Christ great. That everybody in that in that region, everybody on that island, everybody in that community could could begin to worship and experience the joy of living in Christ. Now our bodies are going to die again. Our our flesh is going to wither. We're not cured forever. Everybody that Paul that the Lord cured through Paul as he prayed died again. But if they trusted in Jesus. They'll rise up with Jesus. They have eternal life in Jesus. They have put their treasure where it cannot be destroyed by rust, eaten by moths. It can't be stolen by a thief because treasure in heaven is worthwhile and forever. And the purposes of God are not to have us be overly reliant to things in this world that can go away, but to become reliant on him and his kingdom and to see his kingdom break in and see people give their lives to Christ here. And that is my purpose, is is to let the Lord's power be our witness through me and and to share the gospel with others. And I, I thought it was so incredible to share this with my family, to talk about the message and get this reflection and, and to find out that my family has a great 360 on these five things. Now, are we perfect? No. Should you look up to us? Probably not. But are the things I'm telling you, the dynamics I'm telling you to know your family and to look for these five things, are those dynamics important? Yes, they are. So don't put me on a pedestal, but do examine these things in your life. Ask them questions about uh, the people God has put around you and who you are. And one of the things about a list like this is to be able to, to reflect over it and to think about the importance of it as we share in it. And one of the things I realized after that sermon is no one person can do all of these well. But one of the great things in community is we can see how God has put people around us to help us in these five things. And I thought that was incredible. I thought that was worth sharing with you this week. And I hope it's an encouraging devotional to you. Well, my friends, I'm going to pray in just a second. As I pray, I want to say thank you for joining another midweek breakdown. And I I hope this was encouraging to you. and, And I hope that the Lord helps you this week. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all my friends that you would help us to get through both the those that I know and don't know watching this video. Lord, I pray that, that you would be an encouragement to them. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, be with us this week and guide us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, we thank you for all good gifts come from you. You knit us together in the womb. You have a plan for each one of our lives. And Father, I pray as we reflect on these words that you would help us to get through. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, my friends, again, thank you, and I will see you Sunday morning.